and the praise this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we surrender to you, O oh God, because you are the king of the universe. We surrender unto you, Father God, because you have chosen us to gather in this manner. 
And so, Father, we pray that you take total preeminence of this place. Speak unto us, O oh God, in your very special way. Lord Almighty, we hinder every plan of the enemy, Jehovah, that hinders your people from listening unto you. Now we pray, Spirit of the living God, that you count us worthy, Father God, to sit under your teaching this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that your word shall come with wisdom and with understanding, that it shall help our lives, O oh God, even to be better Christians in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And every one of us says, Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You may kindly take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's a blessing to stand before you this morning and share a few thoughts and share a few understanding on the aspect of love and marriage. And today we are dealing with a very special theme that I was given by the youth that said today we better look at the challenges that we face in relationships the challenges that we face we face in relationships we will also look at the fears the fears that we have because of relationships some fears they make us not to get into relationships I want to submit to the church this morning and afternoon that marriage is not for boys neither is it for girls i'm not speaking in terms of age i'm speaking in terms of maturity marriage is not for boys it's not for girls the fact that you are putting on a trouser does not guarantee you to marry the truth that you have all the physical organs of a man, the physical organs of a woman, does not guarantee you to get married. I still want to state to the church that marriage is not for non-believers. Marriage is not for non-believers. I want you to understand that. Our community that we are living in today are in so much pain and trouble because of the misunderstanding of what marriage is. Because of that misunderstanding where everybody marries because he's a man, is a woman, we feel he qualifies to marry. Some of us are products of those homes. Sorry to say that. We are products of homes where there is no love. We are product of homes that are dysfunctional. A home that is dysfunctional. We are products of home where we were not taught what it means to love. We have such a bad picture about marriage. When you walk in town, you pass by the bus rank, you see all sorts of people. I want to assure you that all those people that we meet there, they come from where? Homes. They are all products of a family. They were all products of a man and a woman who said they loved each other. My question for you is, do you want to contribute to the problems that are already outside? Or you would love to do something better in order to change the situation that the world is going through. And if that is your decision to bring about a change from what you are seeing outside, what is it that you are doing as a youth in preparation for marriage? 
I know all of us, all of you, are looking forward to one day get married. Am I right? And I believe this is why you are here. But how many of you have ever bought a book about marriage and you read? You finished it. Raise up your hand. You bought, you went to the bookshop. You went to the bookshop and you bought a book about marriage. And you read the book, you finished it. I want to see your hands. I have two hands. Of people that took it upon themselves. That took their precious money. They went to a bookshop and they bought a book about marriage. And they read the book and they finished it. <laughs> two people. How many are we here? But we all want to marry. What do you know about marriage? How many of you have taken it upon themselves to attend conferences like this one? And unfortunately, even in our churches, such issues are not addressed. All they do is on the day when you are getting married, Mamba, that's the day they will take you through premarital counseling. Am I right? And let me tell you, at that time, you don't hear anything. All that you are looking for is the wedding day. Your mind, your concentration, whatever they will tell you is useless. It won't make sense. Because whatever advice they will give you is not going to help you. As such, when you get into marriage inside, you start to live marriage trial and error. Can this work? Can this work? And you live in such an atmosphere of trial and error because you have never been taught. So if you want something precious, if you want to get something serious for your life, I want to teach you a principle. Nothing comes easily. Nothing comes easily. You should be ready to pay a price. Next misconception. There is also a misunderstanding in our body, in the body of Christ, whereby they look at somebody who is single to be abnormal. Am I right? When you are single, you are not married. Even in church, you are not recognized as a human being. There are certain positions they cannot give you because you are not married. The reason is simple. The church, the community, trains us to marry. They do not understand that marriage is a blessing. Are you following me? Marriage is what? It's a blessing. Blessed are you when you get married. And that's why Michael Melsina was hinting on to say, when it comes your way, take it serious. Appreciate God. Appreciate God that you are married. Because it is what? A blessing. It's not that he deserved it. I want you to understand this so that you do not commit suicide if you stayed single. Not everybody, not everybody is meant to marry. But the community, the church, prepare us to marry. There are many reasons that can keep you out of marriage. There are many reasons that can make you not to marry. Number one is divine purpose. When you are moving in the divine purpose of God, there are some that are reserved and preserved from marriage. Number two could be the community where we are coming from. Can make you not to marry. 
When you look at how marriages are breaking down through divorce and everything, you feel like it's okay, I can stay with single. There are many reasons, even when you want to get married, nobody's coming your way. It's not that you don't want to marry, but there is nobody to marry you. This is why we are here this morning, to help us to understand when we enter into relationships, that there are certain principles, there are certain things that we should look at. Those who follow me on my Facebook page, I wrote, I said, the longest journey on earth is to get to the heart of a man. That is a long journey. There are times when I start my car going to Zambia, I will do 1,800 kilometers driving, but I know I will reach my destination. But to get to the destination of a man in his heart, it can take you your lifespan. There are witnesses here who thought they did the best they got this man, it is theirs. No can child. When they go on, they go on. I saw something about to have a say, I'm going to me. Say, I'm going to have you did not reach to his heart because it is the longest journey. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many have walked that journey before and you never reached the end? Just when you felt like the bells are ringing, uh, you even bought the ring and uh, secretly you looked at the wedding dress and you say, wow, wow, wow. You even began to save. Why? It is the longest journey. Even when you got into marriage, I pray for you that this teaching should not just help you outside, it should help you inside. Our verse today is taken from First Chronicles or Corinthians chapter 7 and verses 9. I want to seal that with the word of God. If you are there, give it to us. Thank you so much, men and women of God in the house. I have a daughter, a very special daughter in the house, all the way from Biscop. Are my grandchildren here? Are my grandchildren here? <laughs> we look forward to that. God bless you. But at least I have one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Smelane, you are welcome. God richly bless you. We're happy to see you here. We hope before you go, you'll come and greet the young people. Someone read this verse for me. Number Kunjani. Kohle. Kohle. But if they can't, they burn with passion. I want to give you a key principle from that scripture from that scripture you need to understand that in every man and woman there is a passion from that scripture maybe she doesn't have the passion to marry no passion why? It is an inborn. No, passion. This is why. No, 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 
qu'on observe. Are we together? And those are things I want to correct this afternoon. Those are things I want to dwell on this afternoon. That do we need to be religiosity? I hope you understand the word religiosity. Do we have to be religious throughout? That's what we are here for. How do we bring a balance between Christianity and my personal life? Those are challenges that you are facing as a youth. I said earlier on, every single adult faces the following challenges. They face external challenges. They face internal challenges. And they try to cope with singleness. They are external challenges. They are also what? Internal challenges. And now you are trying to bridge and learn to live with what? With the singleness. Painful as it may seem to be. You've got to live with it. So you try all that you can to live with singleness. Painful. External challenges, they come from your family. External challenges, they come from your people that you care for. The people that loves you. Sometimes the external challenges, they even come from your pastor, from the church that you attend. Are you following that? When your aunt calls you and says, Yes, 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 yes. There are chairs, guys, here. Come here. Come and sit here. There are chairs here. Come here, guys. It's a blessing to have you here. Those are external challenges. Sometimes you face external challenges. Sometimes you face external challenges from your, your friends. You face external challenges from your friends. Your friend... Your best friend now is married. So sell away to Anna. So we have a shatis and Jabonga Seba Pelil. So we are a camelu and we are Tibuka Mir and Anikubi Kubinche. Kut along Jungang Bonak. It is now moving from external, it's becoming what? Internal challenge. You were the youth leader. Say woman to another period of punk. We have a shatis. So when I will me lenge, didn't I see me lenge? See a cola, and I a coach. You start asking yourself now the external challenge is becoming what? an internal challenge you go into the mirror there is something wrong about me maybe I'm twisted maybe those are challenges that we will go through as a youth not only that you face a challenge when you look at your age especially for ladies you look at your age and you are approaching 35. 35. Jesus, have mentioned me. 37. <laughs> At that time, I wish I had time to talk about the desperation that you go through in life. You reach a point where you say, let me just have even a kid. You know what? It has moved from external challenge. It is now what? An internal challenge that you are facing. Now you come to reasoning and try to live with it. You try to live with it. You start to develop defensive mechanism 
You start to develop yourself. You concentrate on yourself to forget about these other issues. So you forget out, you concentrate on buying yourself a car, building yourself a house. You are fighting the internal challenges. You will not even find joy in what you are buying. I'll come to that. How you deal with fear. So when you see ladies there in town shopping what they don't want to shop. How many have been there? You go to town to shop what you don't want to shop. Usually it happens after a disappointment. <laughs> Usually it happens after a disappointment. After a letdown. You go to cool yourself down. You buy what you did not intend to buy. You are trying to get a release from the pain of disappointment. But that is not the answer. Somebody shout hallelujah. You need to see where you are. Some of you are not yet there. You are getting there. Some of you are not yet there. You are getting there. Which one is stronger? Internal challenge or external challenge? Internal challenge. There are many of you who shed silent tears. Silent tears. When we see you in praise, you are singing, you are bored like a lion. Hallelujah, Vesalan. Hallelujah, Vesalan. I say, we'll be away to her. Evening will locate you alone. The hallelujah will finish. The car will be parked outside. The TV will remain in the sitting room. Ngena a bedroom. You know your bank account is fat. But here you don't need it. You don't need your bank account here. Look at me. Money can buy sex. Money can buy sex. It can never buy love. And if you are here, my daughter, you try all that you can out of the internal challenge to win a man. I want to tell you, a man will win somebody else. The reason is, it is in man to win. That's a super ick of a man. Anga kufu manjenya lo kuti ute tkatulo mtengele tkatulo ute moto mtengele moto ute kusha hake kusha tafleni ho se ube ngmedem siete skatsak ata uba ne maliak ata tiwole a lady will submit to you because Okay? The day she will have her own money. Money is a true tester of character. Money is a true tester of character. Some of you are very humble now. Nice to talk to. Because you will turn a in a pocket. Nice. I can call you and sit you down and talk to you. It's okay. The day you will have and you will have a You know, problem. Because money is a true tester of what? Of character. If you meet a man with money who is humble, I'm giving you hints. If you meet a woman with money who knows her position, I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> you are in the right place. That's why love is not rude. 
it's not rude. Love is not rude. No matter how big you can be, CEO or what, know your position. So don't let external or internal challenges make you a nip decision. I don't know how to break that one. A snip decision. Don't let external challenge, internal challenge. I could be don't this I could be that. standards it. Good in good in Akulu. Make him fund this. I could make a corner. I could chill him. I want back to fund this. Yeke la ni chela vantu Stop it. You are not. A, don't think they don't want to marry. They want to marry. Find a way of talking to them to build them. Don't make them make, don't let them make decisions they will regret for the rest of their lives. Th that person I'm talking about, you are not going to live with that person. It will be that young lady, that young man who has to live with that young lady or that young man. This is why it must be an independent decision guided by the Holy Spirit with wisdom and knowledge in making such a decision. Many of you, you say love is blind. Am I right? How many have said that before? It's not blind. It's ignorance. What you don't know can kill you. Love is not blind. Love has got eyes. It sees. You, you are now God to change a person. No, I call you, I call you. 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 I call Because in life, there are no small decisions. Every decision you make in life is major. Every decision you make in life is what? It's major. It does not just affect you. It affects everybody that loves you. If you make a wrong decision... You will not just affect your life tomorrow. You will affect your family. You will affect your church. You will affect your community. The people that are around you who love you will be affected when they see you crying. Says cancel, yes, cancel, yes, cancel, yes, cancel. Usinikom seventy pehela. Asa unni pelom seventy. So love is not blind. It is ignorance that make you do certain things thinking it's love when you are destroying your future. Never forget, there is no minor decision. Every decision in life is major. It may not affect you now. Five years later, you will feel it. You will feel it. The people who are clapping hands for you today, they may not be there. You will have to face it alone. Let me just move to this that we came for. Some challenges that we face in relationships as singers. I'm talking to singles that are in the church. Some challenges that you face as singles in the body of Christ. How many singles in here are dating? Come in, so pay us. Come in, so how? Second, in Kuluma na vanilla. How? In Kalema singles la, who are in relationships? Now, but clear. One, two, three, spare, four. Okay, five myself wrong. 
Six. My cell phone. Yes, seven ten. Kunun kul. Seven eight. <laughs> Nine. Wow, beautiful. Ten. Oh, spare. I'm happy for you. But you have not told daddy. All right. The challenges that the youth, the singers, the challenges that the youth, the singles face in relationships, number one is a misunderstanding of what is dating. that misunderstanding of what is supposed to be done during the time of dating is where you mess up the whole essence of marriage Yeah. Yeah. Come with me, come with me. The real problem that we have is a misunderstanding of what is dating. Dating is not a Swazi culture, Pela. It's not a Swazi culture. It's not an African culture. Dating is not a Christian culture. It's not Christian. Dating is not Swazi culture. It's an American culture. Where the boy will go with a girlfriend. Mommy, Mick Delic is my boyfriend. Hi, Delic. How are you, Delic? All right. That's the dad to the girl. Daddy, I met Delic. He's a good friend. All right, Derek, you're welcome. Feel free. In my house, I'll kick you faster than you can. <laughs> when Derek is going, Esther will go by the door and kiss Derek. Derek, bye bye. Good night. And the mommy said, Derek, bye. That's American. And you know what? That's what we are copying. Because we have lost what is called self-identity. We have lost what is called cultural identity. We have lost what is called African identity. We are now living the way we have been taught by our colonists, the people who colonized us, they taught us how to behave. And the white man became the mirror of behavior. When you do not behave like a white person, you are still living a barbaric life. When you do not uh, do what, why? No, a white has become a standard of development. You want all of us to know you are coming from Jaws. So when a very as fanan say kupuki de gradiak. The same principles, the same understanding as lays to the laws 
of your identity. If I ask you, who do you define yourself to be? Who are, do you know who you are? 